Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at another access object known as a report. Reports, unfortunately, aren't nearly as useful as you would think they would be. I generally recommend that people export the data they wish to work with into, say, Excel, and then create their charts using Excel or whatever else you're going to do. I really don't recommend using the reports within Access. Historically, there's been a lot of um, incompatibility issues where say or may I should say formatting issues if you exported a report that had a header and a footer in access when you exported it into word the the header and the footer would instead be in the body of the document itself and if you've worked with headers and footers you know that's not the way it's supposed to work a header and footer is treated in a very different way than text within the body of the document itself. So it doesn't export well. And that's just one example. There's other things that get lost. Like I've seen um, labels get lost, calculations and other issues. So generally speaking, if there's these problems, why am I covering it? Well, it is a legitimate part of access and it does serve a purpose. I find that the purpose of the report is for the per person using the database itself. When you start working with a lot of data, and particularly if you're with a big organization, there's two parts to the data. There's what you do in the database, but then there's what you report out to other people. So the report is good for the person using the database itself. Maybe you're trying to get a snapshot of activity. I wouldn't quite call it a diagnostic tool per se, but I find that the report is more for uh, monitoring of the database itself as opposed to reporting out to other people. Like I said, in those cases, you'd really want to probably use Excel, something like that. Just do a raw export of the data and format it outside of Access. So how do we make a report? We go up to create like we have for queries and tables, and you'll see that there is blank report. So let's go ahead and click on blank report. And again, I continue to avoid using the wizards. I'd rather show you, you could click on a wizard if you want and have it walk you through it. The idea is that we're trying to get a little bit more of a granular and kind of low level understanding uh, rather than having something uh, just do these broad strokes and generalized approach to the object. You can get more into the minutia. So we're gonna click on view and then we're gonna click on design view and then click on design, click on property sheet, make sure that we have the dot in the upper left hand corner of the report because that means we want the properties of the report itself. Each field that we're gonna put here can have properties, but we're trying to change the property of the report itself. So over here for data, if it's not already selected, go to record source, click on the drop down box and you'll see that it matches the tables over here. So let's click on currently owned. Now the fields within the currently owned table will be accessible to this form, uh, excuse me, this report. So if we click on add existing fields, now this fields we can select. So let's go ahead, let's, uh, just click, drag and drop collectible, click, drag and drop possessed, click, drag and, drag and drop cost, click, drag and drop sell. And it doesn't matter where you put them at the moment. So you're gonna notice two things. One, there is a corresponding label to the field. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that if you click on one and you grab the border, it moves both and it doesn't matter if you deal with the label or the field itself if you're grabbing the border they both move if you grab a the specifically the upper left corner you can move it independently another good thing to note is that this is a label this is a field so this that's the name of the field but this is just label. You can change the label all you want and they'll have no impact on this. So maybe a field has a not so 
uh, user friendly name like DT underscore NM underscore PUR for date of the name of who purchased it, whatever. Well, DT underscore NM underscore PUR isn't great. So you could actually change this label to something that is more user friendly and have it not impact the actual field. In this case, we use names that were user friendly. You can also use the arrows in your keyboard to move a selected item over. So if you like using the keyboard, you can do that. So again, we're going to click on a label, click on the dot in the upper left corner. Click on the dot in the upper left corner. Click on the dot in the upper left corner. Running out of room, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, this is where I want to pause. For those of you who know more about access and are familiar with reports, this might look okay to you. Because with a form, which we haven't really discussed yet, it's basically what you see is what you get. If the area is that big on the form, that's how big the form will be when you run it. Not so much with a report. This space, this detail area, and I should have clarified that there's three parts. There's page header, detail, and page footer. So page header gets repeated at the top of every page. Page footer gets repeated at the bottom of every page, kind of like a Word document. Okay. However, this detail section is not a one and done. This detail section will show up for every single record. So if I have 20 records, I'm going to get this entire area repeated 20 times. So let's run it just so you can see how that looks and why it's wrong. So let's click on view and see all that space is repeated for every single record. So it's not quite what you see is what you get. It's more like what you see gets repeated. So what are you going to do? Well, this still isn't quite right yet because let's run it one more time these labels are repeated every single time. Now with all the space, you might say, well, it looks okay, but obviously we don't want that space. So our mission, if we choose to accept it, one, we wanna take these labels and put them in the page header so they're repeated only once. Two, we wanna get rid of all this space. Well, the space is easy. If you point at the bottom bar, you'll see how the mouse changes. Left click, hold, drag this up. Now we're going to run it again just so you can see how dramatic of a difference it is. It still won't be right because of these, but one thing at a time. See, suddenly this looks much, much better, much read more readable. Everything is much more compressed, but we still have these repeated labels. So again, the detail section is kind of like the body section of a Word document, and that is... Um, you're going to put all that stuff into it, whereas the page head header and the page footer is a one and done at the top of each and every page. Top and bottom, I should say, of each and every page. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can delink the labels from the, from the fields, or you can just delete them and create new ones. Six one way, one half dozen the other. We'll delete them just so you see what that's like. So I highlight them. Hit delete. If you want, you can select all these at once the way I did that. Just left click, hold the left mouse button, drag just like any other application, let go. Arrow move everything up like I mentioned. Tighten this up a little bit more. Again, doing that is by pointing at the top of that line and then left click and dragging up. Now let's drag this down a little bit. So you, just as you can shrink an area, you can also increase it. So again, you point at the top. You left click, but this time you drag down. See how it increased that section? All right, so page header. What we're going to do is up here, you're going to see text box. Generally, what you think of as a text box, that's really not what Access considers a text box. You're thinking more along the lines of a label. So even though this is text, it's actually going to be a field that would be linked 
to a value. Whereas this is really what you want. You want a label. So we're going to click on label. And we're just going to drag, left click, drag. And we make ourselves a label. And we'll call this, we'll just keep the name the same. Collectible. The box is too big. You can point at one of the dots and just left click and shrink it. Label. Possessed. Again, if it's too big, click on it, point at one of the dots. Well, specifically the right side and push it in. Uh, if you point at one of the diagonals, obviously you can pull it out diagonally. Cost. And sell. So that gets us a lot closer to what we want. It's still not right yet because there's a few more details I want to cover. But again, this is an iterative process. So let's take a look. Click on view. So a lot better. You only have these once now. But as you can see, these are left aligned. These are right aligned. And these also look to be right aligned. So because uh, data of different types is displayed in different manners, it may create um, an aesthetic that you really don't like. And that it's purely up to you what you want to do. So unless you're following some specifically kind of uh, accounting principle, the way that something is displayed or uh, some other format that is accepted by the industry, if this is just for your own uh, use, make it look what makes sense to you. So go back to view, go down to design, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to select all these. So left click, drag over. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the format. So if you go to home and you'll see over here, just like Word and Excel, you have the ability to do alignment. Let's do center alignment. OK. Now, as you can see, like these aren't lined up because I kind of just haphazardly dragged and dropped. But now you can make these lined up a little bit easier. A little bit closer to what you want. And I'll be the first to, uh, to admit that like desktop publishing, actual presentation is not my forte. So these, you can also select center. And now, let's take a look at that. See, to me, that looks good. I find center to be the easiest one to line up. For one thing, if it's right aligned, as the number gets bigger, it pushes out to the left. Likewise, if something is left aligned, and uh, as the values get bigger or smaller, that right border gets pushed in or out. So by centering it, it makes it much easier to line things up. The trade-off is with centering, you might have to have more space between everything to make things fit, because you might actually have wasted space. But Again, that's minutia I'm not really worried about for this particular tutorial. So I'm just going to select this, grab that dot, move it over a little. I think he could move over a little bit. And again, um, this not really a what you see is what you get approach because of the formatting, uh, because the repeating area. So let's go ahead and click on view one more time. And I think that's about the best we're going to get at the moment. So this is the kind of thing I was talking about. Because of size, you will have to make some of these bigger, and you might actually have to create more space just for those few outliers. You'd have to do that anyways, but if it's left aligned, then it wouldn't push as far out to the right, and you wouldn't need as much space between these. So something to consider. So I think that is just about it for this tutorial, because that's the basics as far as putting fields into the detail area putting labels into the header. You can do the same thing with page footer, like maybe you could do um, a total. So say you want to see what the total cost is. So uh, again, like if you're doing like a snapshot, like for accounting or something, it's like, okay, uh, what's the cost of my inventory? Because you have to say report that because that's an asset. You might want to put a total down here. 
So I don't want to do that in this video uh, because when you start dealing with totals, uh, there's a lot of complications that can occur. So I think that really merits its own video, but just uh, as a primer, you can indeed make totals uh, based on um, if you have numerical values. So again, it has to be an actual number. If it's a number that's being treated as a text, probably won't work. I uh, haven't tried it recently, but generally speaking, if you want uh, to have a calculation, it can't just be a number. It actually has to be formatted as a number. All right, so I think that's about it, and I think that's a good introduction to reports. If you have any questions, just let me know.